Alright guys, so in this video what I'm going to do is talk about the Arduino compatible based uh, EPS A266, the Wi-Fi version. Uh, so I do have an Arduino um, R3, uh, and I can quickly show you, um, obviously this one doesn't come with Wi-Fi, so as an alternative I've decided to buy this uh, off, off Amazon. Uh, it's actually the D1 version, uh, I didn't realize that uh, there were newer versions out. Uh, but obviously it comes with a Wi-Fi instance, so I obviously want to play with, play around with it. Uh, fairly simple uh, procedure, uh, though it took me a while to grasp uh, the issues that were occurring. Um, but what I'm just going to do is just plug it into the USB, uh, and I have a couple of cables. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that I can connect to the board. Uh, and obviously there are a few pre prerequisites, uh, some libraries that need to be made, uh, need to be installed rather, um, and then obviously um, just the actual communication as well. So one thing uh, we just need to make sure that we can actually connect to the board, um, and the most simplest way of doing that is making sure I can connect and showing that from an LED form. I do have, uh, and I'll. I'll upload this somewhere and put a link to the actual code, but it's very simplistic. Um, just a simple code that will just run through uh, the loop, that we'll call this blink LED method, and it'll just run through, turning it on and off. Uh, it just shows that I can actually connect. Uh, one thing you do need to do, however, is you need to make sure that you connect, just going to turn that off. That, um, that you need to connect using the libraries. So in order to do that, you go into include libraries and making sure you have the EP, ESP8266 versions, um, the actual recommended libraries installed. Uh, to confirm that, what you need to do is, uh, you need to go to the load manager, um, I'll, I'll put the links out to the bottom as well, um, but you just need to make sure that the ESP libraries are also installed. Um, for the D1, uh, you need to include at least the um, Adafruit IO Arduino uh, libraries. Uh, you can see the here the ESP8266 uh, version. I have the, the latest version as of the date uh, of this recording, uh, and I also have this uh, example code uh, ESP um, chipset installed as well. So they were the only two that I installed, um, but obviously I'll, I'll put a link out on how to install them. You just download and then import them. Um, but the best way of doing this, and I'll get my little video out again. So the best way of doing this is to simply upload um, well, first of all, you need to make sure you connect to the WeMod, uh, WeMoz um, board um, because I'm using the D1. I'm actually using the D1 retired, um, yeah, uh, retired board, and I also need to make sure I'm connecting to the right port. Um, the upload speed, um, just for doing this, shouldn't be of too important. But you typically, I, I typically, typically rather come across a few issues with actual insulation as well. So um, because of the speed, I've had to, the actual serial speed it had to be slowed down in order for it to work. So at the moment, it's compiling the sketch. Again, fairly simplistic one. Once that's done, it's taking a little time. So the speed here is pre pretty good. Should only take a few seconds. And then once that's done, I can see the LEDs flashing. So at least I know I can communicate to the board. So that gives you a good indication that everything's all set up. Now what you need to do then is go into the examples, file examples, scroll down into the HTTP client. So the basic authentication will basically just give you the initial get request from the um, from any website. 
So I will I will close that one. The big focal thing here, if I open up the serial monitor, um, I can get these uh, issues quite often. Now, what you need to do at the bottom is just make sure that your serial bus speed is is different. It is it corresponds to the actual um, uh, one that you're using in the code as well, and it also has to, I believe, correspond to the upload speed. So we'll keep this at. 11520 uh, and we'll keep this as 11520 as well and what you also need to do is place in the SSID which is your uh, Wi-Fi connection or your Wi-Fi identifier and then obviously the password Password clearly is going to be changed before uploading this. Um, if I give that a save, let me just save it somewhere. And at least give that a try. Let's see what goes on. All right, so I do see this little for loop uh, whereby it's just it's just highlighting um, to uh, the serial uh, terminal window, um, you know, the, the response back. Uh, but you see there's nothing else that actually occurs. Um, if this occurs, and it's likely to be this issue as well, um, there's something wrong, uh, with, I imagine, something wrong with your wire connection. For me, for instance, BIOS um, is a lower I as my SSID. I think I may have it. Yes, I actually have the uh, that one there. So, give that a go. Give that another go, rather. Let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see that um, if I'm in this if loop, then um, I actually begin making that actual connection. Uh, the reason why this connection fails is because nothing's running on 192.168.1.12. So if I go uh, google.com forward slash finance, should be good. Let's go www old school. Give that a go again, see what happens. All right, so you can see there that we actually get a get response, a HTTP response of 200, which basically means it's managed to get that response back. Um, dependent on the type of URL, will respond back in the type of payload that you actually get. Not sure we're actually going to get any payload that's of any relevance for that URL, um, but that's how you make this uh, Wi-Fi connection work. Alright guys, hope that helps.